What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jimmy James, 59. And it's been a little while since I've been able to post a video. It's been out of town quite a bit, and a lot has changed. I tried to get some videos up, but every time I tried to get a video up, we either got a preview update or a mega patch, blah, blah, blah. So I decided that I want to talk about the new patch a bit more specifically and just give you some of my own gameplay since I've been able to, to hit the ladder out there and test some new bonuses. And today's video is about the Spanish. The Spanish, I think, have become a really, really nice civilization for not just team game cav play, but also 1v1 Arabia. And I want to show you a build here and a strategy that I've been playing also in 1v1s, but out here on the ladder in team games. And it starts off right when you when you play Spanish scouts, something you usually want to do is put three houses up at the beginning. As you can see, right, you won't get housed because your villagers build faster. And to try to speed up your food collection, right? Putting six on sheep, by the way, I'm gonna, I'm putting all this up. It should be uh, come up at the beginning of this video or now I forget when I'm putting things in here, but a video uh, basically telling you what the essential build is here for a 19 pop Spanish scout rush. Um, but yeah, this is what we're doing. You know, you wanna get that food in as fast as possible. The great thing about Spanish, right? Is that since you get these houses up, all three of them, it really simplifies your build. And so I think this is one of the quicker scout rushes that's also, I would say, a bit more friendly to, to players that maybe don't have as high of an APM because you get your three houses up and you don't have to worry about putting down houses. So this really awkward moment when you're like luring elephants and you're trying to lure uh, deer or ostriches, whatever they are to the TC, you kind of just avoid, right? So you can see that we're doing this right now because you're just setting our gather points out here, getting three on wood. And yeah, so the idea, right, is to start taking our boars early, delay getting the three villagers on wood by essentially just like one villager. And the plan is to use the simplicity of this build here to lure in two ostriches. And then later on in the build, right, we're going to, maybe in the second to last uh, villager, we're going to go ahead and get our mill up. And maybe send the last villager to wood. You just kind of got to feel it out. But the idea is to be able to do a 19 population scout rush. And I should say, by the way, you know, I'm a, like a mid-1300, yeah, 1400 player on a good day. So you're going to see some imperfections in... Uh, my own gameplay, so, you know, just be aware about that. Uh, never claiming to be a perfect player, but let's actually think about the, you know, the rest of the map, right? I got a teammate here in the yellow who's playing as the Britons. We have a goth player in the north, very interesting. And we also have a blue Magyar player. The Magyar player is the one that I really want to make sure we hold up against. Um... Magyar Knights and Spanish Knights, there's really no difference. It's just the Blacksmith upgrades, right? Uh, I'll be able to get Blacksmith upgrades and not get, uh, not have to pay gold for them, but he's going to get them for free. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, he, he gets a nice power spike, but we'll be able to get our units upgraded a little bit easier. So it just really depends on what you value. I think the Magyar bonus is, is a better one in some ways. But that Spanish blacksmith bonus is a part of what makes them really, really interesting to play as a scout civilization. You're going to see us play heavy, heavy scouts here, right? Um, the idea with this build of the Spanish is to basically delay putting up a mining camp as long as possible and just getting, just researching technologies in order to generate gold, right? It's really interesting. Uh, concept, right? Um, and that's what we're going to do. We're just going to research technologies to get gold. And so that means we're going to play, because we have to spend those resources to research those techs, we're going to play a bit of a heavier feudal age, but 
you know, I kind of don't mind that in some ways, right? Get out to a fast start, control the map, and, you know, keep our uh, keep our opponents down, right? So you can see, right? Uh, no idle time at the TC, and we're going to be up. Bada boom, bada bing. A stable comes up. We have villagers, right? Uh, just to show you how much food, right? We have over 300 food in the bank, and that's after researching double bid X. So, ton of food in this build, as you can see. And yeah, we're ready to we're ready to rock and roll pretty much here. And I'm gonna go ahead and crank out a couple scouts. There you go, bada boom. Yeah, man, we're off to the uh, yeah we're off to the races. Probably see a little bit of idle time here. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I didn't. Yeah, you can get horse collar with this build too, right? Something to keep in mind. And yeah, we're cranking out units, man. Right? We have the food. Just I'm showing you this, just to let you know that we have the food. The idle TC time is uh, really just a user error at this point. And we're cranking out scouts, right? So we have four scouts on the way. We have our TCs running, right? Look, we have more villagers. All of which is to say, right, that you can do 19 pop scouts with Spanish. And you can get a lot of scouts there out on the field, which is not something you can say for, uh, for every civilization. So Spanish are really interesting, right? You can see we're prioritizing our villagers because... We want to get those farms out, right? We want to get those farms out. So we have four scouts. We're trying to wall up a little bit too, trying to keep this economy, uh, trying to keep this economy safe. And we're kind of just trying to find a way in. Um, you know, when we click into the base, it's taking us around this way. Get another scout out, boom. Keeping TC production going, right? There's always something you're trying to balance in these games. You're trying to balance uh, keeping your TCs running. Now, we're having to play this really cagey against the Magyars because they already have their Blacksmith attack upgrade and we don't, right? So we're trying to take good fights on a hill right here. That's a really nice fight for us. And he's got more scouts coming. We probably kind of pursued that, though we do have an injured scout, but we're gonna you know, we're gonna make a lot of scouts in this game. So uh no, no worries on on that front, right? And we're keeping our villagers our villagers producing here, right? Not bad, not bad, not bad, right? Not a lot of idle time, right? As you can see, right? We've had a little bit of idle time here and there, but not a lot. We've been keeping the TC running pretty good. We have the eco to pretty much, uh, pretty much do what we want for the most part. So yeah, you know, again, I'm, part of this is just me trying to, to remind us, right? That, you know, look, you know, you can, you're gonna have the eco to do what you need to do um, with this build, right? So. Right now we're just kind of camping, right? Uh, this conversation going on with the ally. He's got scouts again. They're Magyar scouts. We really can't. We really can't fight them just yet, right? Um, but we're trying to get a blacksmith down, and now we'll be able to research some technologies. So let's go ahead, right? We're gonna go forward. I think he wants to go forward, and now he sees us. Yep, at his base. Um, honestly, he probably should just have kept attacking um we might get walled up by the time he gets there but then again maybe not right he's got six we have six but he's got the upgrade he's got that free forging now i'll say this is a little bit of a mistake by me but we just don't know i just don't know what's here right so as we uh are getting walled up all right um okay that guy's kind of stuck up there. So this is actually, I think, a really big mistake for me. Um, scouting and being somewhere where, essentially, I don't really know what the terrain is like. Um, I'm trying to figure these things out so I'll know somewhere to go. We're going to lose that scout there. Uh, and, yeah, he's he's got the numbers advantage here. So it's not a fight we can take. We have forging on the way i think i might have thought that i already had forging at this point we're just trying to find some things he walls in that vill and we're not getting out of here alive um he has us out really good flanking maneuver there and we're just going to go ahead and take the fight because right we have pretty good farming eco we're just going to remake those scouts you see our opponent does not have the farms yet he's trying to get the gold and we're just going to go ahead and remake these bad boys you can see right we have them queued up and yeah, it's not looking that bad, right? Um, yeah, not looking that bad. He's keeping his TC really, really nicely, uh, really nicely uh, moving. So really good from our opponent. 
But our opponent is still open, so he's still quite vulnerable, actually. And that's one of the reasons why he's kind of got to camp out at home here. And you can see, right, we have forging in, so we're going to be up to speed. We're getting town watch. And he's going to try and go forward, take a little bit of a fight. Okay. I think, do we see this and come back? Yep, yep, yep. Right, we see this and come back. And... So this is the way this build works, right? You can see we have 150 goals. We just have to research three more technologies to get back to a good volume. And we're going to take this fight on the hill. Again, we have we have forging now, so we can actually do this. He has some low HP scouts, right? And yeah, now you can see the scout numbers are in our favor now as we're linking up with our ally. And dude, we're just cranking things out. One of the really nice things about this build is we're going to put up a second stable to ensure that we have a military advantage is that you have to think about it from this perspective. It's not just that you are you don't need to put anybody on gold to click up to Castle Age. It's that you can assign all these gold miners to do other things. So you want to get wood, whether you want to farm. It's one of the reasons why we're able to afford the kind of scout production that we can. This is the very nature of opportunity cost, right? Um, and I don't mean to not focus on my ally and what's going on on his side, though. It looks like there's not a ton that's been uh, going on between them, right? Um, you know, some, some attacks, but we're trying to showcase this build here, so uh, that's really the, uh, the main point. And you can see right now we're at 190. Uh, should just research scale barding armor, but for some reason in this game, I thought that I'd already researched it. So that would've been really easy. And I just get the, I was really puzzled actually why I didn't have it yet, why I didn't have 200 gold. So I just researched another, an armor upgrade, right? Uh, Cause it's 100, food and you know we have so much so, such a good farming eco that hey let's not even worry about it right and uh and you can see right we're gonna get to that 200 gold here in a sec and perfect right and now look at this boom we're on the way up to castle age right and now we're taking a fight with our ally right we have right we have forging on our scouts and this is how you do it right Trading these scouts, getting some pretty good value, cleaning up our opponent's army, kind of forcing him to make more army, but we're still, we're still going to keep crunching out units here, right? You see, we just finished our berries, and what are we going to do? Well, make another stable, and now we're going to get to a mining camp, right? So you see, we clicked up without a mining camp, right? Shocking. No other Civ can really do this, man, and it's... Pretty cool. I mean, you could do some kind of like market abuse, I guess, if you want, but I don't know. That's a lot of resources down the drain with Spanish. You get all that gold for free, right? And we're keeping up army production. And uh, sometime soon here, I'm going to figure out that I didn't have armor. Um, <laughs> but this is great because you get this mining camp up and, you know, you, you can research the gold tech, as you can see, we're about to do there. And hey, now we've got, uh, we're going to get some more gold in. And from here, right, I think that if you play this extended feudal age like we have, you bank up a lot of wood in this uh, in this build. Um, so just go ahead, right, reseed farms. Remember, right, we already had horse collar, so we got our eco upgrades. Because you want to get your eco upgrades with Spanish because that's, that's gold for you, right? Even Bloodline's going to get you a little bit extra gold. So pretty cool, actually. You can see we have 14 scouts. Are getting bloodlines? Now we see armor. And now light calves coming in now. Like normally you'd want to be getting plus two armor on your, uh, your units here, but that's okay. And the thing about Spanish that's so really so great now is the way that the free blacksmith techs and the free technology, free gold with technologies bonuses synergize with one another. Um because you can go ahead, right? We have all this food and boom, plus two, right? Do we have the gold for it? Eh, we have it by one. But the great thing about this is that, hey, we can go ahead and get that for food. And we're not, we're not that gold that we would need to make knights, we're not cutting into that. So playing like kind of an all-in cavalry type approach uh, is really, really uh, worthwhile here. And we're gonna have plus two on these guys here. I'm gonna send some units in here, just try and Get some harass going as we're playing a pretty meta game and have even more knights loaded up 
We're getting a second TC down. Again, this is going to build faster because it's Spanish, right? Easy day. See, we have the uh, the food, right? We fell a little bit behind in villager production. No worries, though, right? Now we've got we've got two town centers, and we were prioritizing units a little bit, maybe a little bit too much. I'm gonna try and move back to our ally here. And there we go, right? Knights are coming. And now's a really good time to talk about how you want to play this maybe in 1v1 versus team games. As you can see, I'm going to be mixing in light cap and knights. Part of the reason for that is just because I'm kind of used to playing this actually as a 1v1 strategy. Where what I like to do in a 1v1, since the monk meta is so ubiquitous these days... Um, I like to do waves of light cav and knights to handle monks. And you can see, right, getting the second attack upgrade, very easy with Spanish, it's not costing gold, right? So, good to know, right? That means we can afford more knights. And I think that's a nice way to play a 1v1, right? To mix your light cav and knights. Um, should you play it that way in a team game? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I think there's something to be said for just having units on the field. And units that are going to soak up damage, you know, and light cap can... Once you have plus two armor, can soak up a fair bit of damage. Um, but uh, but you probably want to prioritize knights just a little bit more. And you can see, right, we're killing some vills. Not as many vills as I thought. Let's see what the eco KD looks like. Oh, he's actually taking... Well, he's taking... Yeah, he's taking quite a few losses now. Because again, we have plus two armor. Fight another TC. Boom, boom, right? We have a lot of uh, unit production going. At some point, I'll make another bill. <laughs> um, you know, right now, we're just gonna... Sometimes, you know, when you get... just You just kind of get excited creating units. Oh, we're housed. That's part of it, too, I think. And yeah, so now we've done a lot of damage to blue. Now's the time to move on and start thinking about fighting somebody else, right? We have... Uh, opponent here who is in the green now he's a goth player goth have a really nice scout rush too these days um i thought a little bit about which scout rush i like more goths or spanish i think goths can get up a little earlier their opening's a bit better just sending him up here now yeah goths have a a faster scout rush but i think that the spanish scout rush Synergize it's better into not only mid-feudal age uh, scout production, but also into their overall tech tree. So, it's kind of a tricky thing, and look at that. Look at that poor knight. He's just oblivious to the world. And he's not going to make it. <laughs> so, you can see right now, again, we have big, big army that we're going to be using. I mean, you know... A lot of military. My uh, ally has a lot of military too. And this is important because we don't want the green player here, the goth player, to really get into a lot of Huskarls and be able to counter, to be able to counter our ally who has a lot of archers in the field. And he does have plus two armor on these, uh, on these Huskarls, so it'd be very, very difficult for his archers to deal with. But we're gonna get in here, try and slow him down. He's on one TC. Uh, so you kind of got to do to get that castle up. And, right, we're just going to keep making units. We have six knights in the queue, right? Get technologies of Spanish. You wind up having, you know, I might do another video about this a bit more, uh, a bit more uh, later in the future about the gold, that you, how much gold you actually get. I, and this might be a little controversial, I think the Spanish gold bonus is a better gold bonus than the Malians. Um, I have some arithmetic reasons why I think that's the case. Um, and I also have some intuitions why I think that's the case. And so I haven't really done the math, like the arithmetic, on those intuitions. So I'm not sure if they're right. So I want to take a moment to do that. But I have done a little bit of the math. I mean... Because remember, you gotta remember with Spanish, you get two gold bonuses with Spanish. As you can see, the GG being called from our green player here. And we respond as well. And the game is gonna end here in a second. And there you go, right? So, with Spanish, you get two gold bonuses and you use those to synergize together. You have the 
getting 20 gold with each technology you research, but you also have blacks with upgrades that don't cost gold. That adds up to a lot of savings. I mean, basically, if you're going for if you're going for a unit comp of like Paladin plus Elite Skirm, if you crunch the numbers on that and do the math and think about all the things you're going to be researching, you probably get about 2,000 gold back. And the Malians in their base with their uh, gold piles uh, get about 1,800 gold back. Now, obviously, you're going to be moving out in the map later in the game with the Malians. But again, again, also with Spanish, you can just research things for the heck of it. Um, I, I think the Malian bonus is really good, don't get me wrong. But the fact that the Spanish gold bonus is up there with the Malians, um, I think really says a lot for this city. So, um, but yeah, but that's the build for uh, Spanish. You know, the Spanish, uh, you know, I, I like to call this the Golden Scout Rush. And I think that's what I'll, I'll title this video as. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Hope you're able to use this in your games as well. I have a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah. Well, that being said, right, um, you know, if you have any comments, right, let me know in the video below. I'm going to be doing more build orders like this, uh, videos about the patch, that kind of thing, as I'm getting around to doing content about the patch. And I'll probably put a video up here sometime in the next couple days, uh, maybe this week, about the Return of Rome DLC and my thoughts on that as well. So, that being said, guys, I'm Jimmy James 59 and hey, see you guys out there in the ladder. Peace.